Hey, this is Johnny Jet. Welcome back to my YouTube channel and podcast. And today I'm interviewing Richard Bangs, who is known as pretty much one of the founders of adventure travel. I mean, I know it's broad, but you've been around for a while, Richard, <laughs> with yeah. mounts. Mount Sobek uh, Adventure Tours. Yeah. You travel the world. You have a new app we'll talk about, Stellar. Yeah. Yep. So, r real quick, where'd you grow up? Uh, Washington, D.C. area. Well, so where do you Potomac, live now? And I live in Venice Beach, California, not too far from you. Yeah, I, I knew that, but you know, I wanted yeah, to. I know. Other people yeah, I yeah. know. But you know. Yeah. Did you go to college? Uh, yes, uh, Northwestern and uh, Medill, uh, the School of Journalism there. So, so yeah. you studied journalism, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Um, and how are you doing with quarantine? Have you traveled? I traveled domestically. I've not been on a plane, but have been all through Arizona, Utah, Oregon, and Washington State. Uh, so a lot of a lot of rubber miles. So. Right. I, well, I, this 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 month we're now in February. It marks a year since I've been on a plane. At the, oh. So, and I've never. Wow. Been, in my so whole life, it's three or four weeks I've ever gone, the longest I've ever gone. Uh, yeah, so, which talk about withdrawal. God. Yeah, no kidding. Wow. So what will take you to get back on a plane? Do you are you waiting to get vaccinated or uh I had my first vaccination last Friday. Nice. So I'm waiting for the second one. And uh then I I, I have a lot of travel plans for the rest of the year. Hopefully they will come to fruition. We'll see. Yeah. Any side effects to the vaccine? Uh, yes. Happiness, uh, <laughs> elation. I like that. Comfort. That's getting a second one right about now, actually. All right. That's good. That's good. Fantastic. Right now. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. So I'm very happy. All right. So how many, how many countries do you think you've been to, or do you know? Uh, I have not counted. Um, but, uh, it's easier for me to count the countries I haven't been to wow. at this point. So I would say it's somewhere uh, north of 160, 170 or so. Like that. Wow. And how I many continents? And I all, all the continents. Uh, right. all, all eight of them. So, <laughs> eight? Yeah. yeah. What, what's the eighth one? I think the continent of your mind. So <laughs> who knows? I am incontinent. So <laughs> That's funny. What's, what's, the, <laughs> what's your earliest travel memory? Uh, you know, I didn't do a whole lot of travel when I was growing up, um, although my father did. He was in the CIA, the early CIA. Really? I was D.C. DC based until I got my first job as a river guide in the Colorado River back in um, uh, in college. And that was my my first big travel experience. And it was overwhelming and transformational. That's a, that's a, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, favorite American city. Uh, boy, that's a tough one. I would say Cascadia. That's a com that's a combination of Seattle, Portland, and uh, San Francisco. Okay, so you're not really a city <laughs> guy, are you? Uh, I live in one. I live in one of the biggest ones. That's but true. but I I spent a lot more time. I calculated at one point that I'd spend uh, this is a while ago that I'd spent more than half my nights living nights in a sleeping bag. So have you that's, really? That's changed. <laughs> This was probably uh, a few years ago, but yeah. Wow. Well, how about favorite international city? Wow, that's a really good one. Uh, uh, I'm a big fan of Addis Ababa in Ethiopia. Wow, um, that's the first one. Spent a lot of time there. Anyone say? Yeah, it's 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 sort of the capital of Africa. Oh, it's got everything you'd, you'd ever want. So, um, yep. Uh, good. I would, That's good. I would, hey. I would peg, peg that one. I'd go back there in, in a minute. I'm I'm scheduled to go back there this September. So we'll awesome. See. Well, they have good coffee too, huh? That coffee is originated from Ethiopia. Yeah. So as you know, so <laughs> lots uh, of good stuff. Friendliest people in the world. Uh, wow. Um, friendliest people in the world. I would say I was most shocked when I went to Iran uh, about two years ago now that uh, with all the expectations of, of them being an enemy of our state, um, they were just overwhelmingly curious and friendly and opening doors. And every one of them, as soon as they found out I was an American, wanted to, to bring me home uh, for, for coffee. Um, yeah, incredibly, incredibly warm and friendly people. I, and, I've heard yeah. that. You're not, the, yeah. you're not the first one to tell me that. And I've, I've never yeah. been, I've been close to it and I really want to go. You got to go. You gotta go. So, yeah. 
my company offers trips there so we can we can get you there i i like to hear that yeah yeah you know it's funny because sometimes when you travel internationally and you and you tell people you're from america at first they're like wow i didn't realize americans are so cool or because they, they you know they hear about the government or whatever and it's the same yeah. thing with iran people hear about you know how bad the government is and you think the people are but the people are nothing like the government and i think that's important that's so true i had the same experience in north korea you know, they are brought up from from uh, elementary school upward to believe that the United States is not only their active enemy, but we are constantly plotting to bomb them to to disexistence. Um, but you know, when they meet you, they're they're just they're shocked and surprised. You go, wow, you're just like us. Yeah. And it's you know, it's a wonderful sort of encounter, the person yeah. to person thing. I try to tell people, listen, when you travel internationally, you're really representing your country. And yeah. 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 So. Always be on your best behavior. Well, these days too. Oh, after the last four years, we did have a downturn of, of yes. international receptivity, but uh, it's, I think it's back on the rocket. So for sure. Um, so on the flip side, which country do you think has the meanest immigration officers? Well, <laughs> the meanest. Uh, I, I was, it was a little over a year now ago. I was uh, coming back um, from from the Republic of Georgia via Turkey. And the uh, the immigration officer, a woman, uh, when I went through Turkey, uh, fell asleep when I, when I was uh, trying to pass through. She literally put her head down and started to snore when I finally got through that long line. And so and I had to wake her, I had to reach over and wake her up. Um, <laughs> I don't know what her, her backstory was, but uh, maybe she wasn't the meanest, but she was certainly the sleepiest. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say I was waiting for you to say if she was pissed that you woke her up. Uh, um, she, was, she was in a daze. <laughs> so, are you an aviation geek at all? Do you have a favorite aircraft type? Uh, well, um, I was a fan of the A three eighty, which is which is being faded out. Uh, weren't you on one of the first three eighty flights or something? Yes, Did I read that. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, you were on that one, right? Too the Emirates one. I was not on that one. I've flown okay. flown Emirates okay. and Qatar and 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 Etihad and uh, and all of all of what whom used it. Um, uh, I love that plane. Um, but I also am a big fan of small planes. Um, a good friend of mine, uh, Paul Moritz, owns owns his own aircraft company in South Africa, where they they make these uh, these the small aircraft is like a lawnmower with wings called uh, 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 Bushcraft and um, Bushcats, I'm sorry. And uh, we flew all over Namibia and you could get very close to the wildlife. You're, you know, you're just a little bit above the ground. It was great for photography. I, I love that experience. Wow. Bushcats. Yeah. So did the wildlife just freak out when you're just hovering above them? No, no, they didn't. I think they thought we were mosquitoes, but maybe <laughs> large. So no, it was great. It was a fantastic way. We were actually counting uh, elephant, trying to do a census on how many elephant are in wow. Namibia. And it was a good way to do it so uh what's your drink of choice when you're in the air or on the ground uh well on the ground i i have come to believe that uh, in the air drinking is probably not the healthiest thing to do and i have suffered for it in the past so but i do i am a big fan of of gin and tonics um largely because it's a, an anti-malarial uh, so uh you know the, the british use it in in uh, india and singapore and others um uh, because of the, the the quinine in the tonic, and uh, uh, I subscribe to it. So, knock right. on wood, I haven't I have haven't had malaria yet. Uh, so, do works. you take do you take pills when you travel? Uh, I haven't. When when I first started to travel in my twenties, I certainly did, and took a lot of shots as well. Gamma globulin. Did you ever get one of those? No. Oh, thank God. I mean, it's like the needle is the size of a of a of a pen, <laughs> and. Uh, they they knocked you out, uh, but I remember when I first started travel, you'd have to get um, uh, a dozen shots in order to go to Africa. Um, right. Now you know world health has improved so much; um, uh, it's it's almost rare that you have to get some sort of inoculation unless there's an outbreak, or there's the uh, the grim visitor of of uh, COVID. Um, so uh, yeah, so I don't I, I'm not a big pill taker anymore, but I do drink a lot of gin and with tonic. And that seems to work. Yeah, that, that, I'm yeah. gonna, that's a great tip. I'm going yeah. to use it. Yeah. Uh, ever sit next to any celebrities on a plane? Yes. Um, I was working on a project in China on the Yangtze River. 
and they uh, the producers had hired John Denver to uh, uh, to do the score. And I happened to get on a plane to Australia and had been upgraded to, to first. And I was sitting um, uh, one back uh, on the other side of the aisle of John. And I, I figured when we get in the air, I'm gonna introduce myself. So it, we got up to 35,000 feet. I unbuckle my um, my uh, belt and I go over to, to say hello to him. And the guy in front of me stands up and leans over and says, John Denver, I'm your biggest fan. And he goes, sit down. Can't you see, I don't wanna be disturbed. You know, you get away from me. You're ruining my entire trip. You know, I call him an asshole, et cetera, et cetera. So I slunk back down and I never talked to John Denver. Oh my God, I'm shocked. I thought uh, he would be like a really cool dude. You know, everybody's got a backstory. It might've been a bad day. Right. <laughs> so, that's That's disappointing. Yeah, well, actually- that was it. Actually, I don't have it there. My son took it. I had one of my Fisher Price toys planes uh, that you might have seen in past um, videos. But I used to play with that when I was a kid and listen to John Denver. Oh yeah, uh, know, his planes leaving on, leaving on, a, leaving jet on plane. a jet plane. Yeah. Um, how about what's the craziest thing you've ever eaten? Uh, well, let's see. When we did the first descent of the Omo River in Ethiopia many years ago. Um, uh, the, the, the place was boiling with hippos and we passed a, a tribe of, of folks um, who had had little, if any, any uh, encounters with the outside world. And they had just slaughtered, speared to death a hippo and pulled it up on shore and were barbecuing the skin. So they insisted that we join them or else their spears might be used in a different fashion. So we sat down and, uh, and ate strips of, of freshly slaughtered hippo meat. Wow. Um, and, uh, uh, well, a little bit like bacon, they're related to the pigs. So, but it was not, not particularly tasty or very fatty. Um, and that was the one and only time Smell I've like never bacon. heard. Uh, no, no, it was a little more putrid, but, uh, okay, but, well, yeah, whatever. Well, I think you might've won the award just now for the craziest thing. Uh, <laughs> no one's ever said hippo. Uh, yeah. It's not a delicacy. So. <laughs> You have a favorite hotel? Uh, oh boy, let's see here. Um, uh, lodge. Yeah, a lot of lodges. Um, uh, you, uh, as you well know, there's. Well, so you many. think about it. How about when you travel? Yeah. Uh, which credit card do you use? Uh, well, I use my Alaska Airlines uh, uh, Visa card, okay. um, and so I, you know, I have a few hundred thousand miles built up on that. So that's, and and I probably like you and others. I use those for my family. For sure. So that's great. For sure. Yeah. Um, when you when you got your hotel or lodge, you let me know. But meantime, uh, favorite, favorite island and favorite beach. Uh, I wrote, wrote a book called Island Gods, where where uh, I, I looked at uh, some of the more exotic islands around the world. I would think that the the most otherworldly island, the most in intriguing because of that, is Madagascar. You know, it was it was part of the continent of Africa and it drifted apart with some sort of cataclysmic event 150 million years ago. So it has evolved in a unique way. So virtually all the wildlife, all the vegetation, at least 90% of it is unique to the island. So it is like you've been dropped onto another planet. It is, it's an extraordinary destination. So I would, I would give that a, a high mark. Wow. Um, that's, so. that's something. And my son, he, uh, my son's four years old, and he keeps yeah. telling me, "We take me to Madagascar," and I'm like, "Well, now I'm definitely got to see the lemurs. Got to go see the lemurs. Yeah, it's <laughs> the only place in the world where there are lemurs." So it's true. Yeah. Although I've actually seen them on Richard Branson's private island. Ah, so he bought some and brought them over. Yeah, Necker Island. Oh wow, love you got well, one he, up he, on he, me uh, there. Well, I think he takes care of them. Yeah, I'm sure it's a zoo. Yeah. So so basically, that's cool. Um, how about? Did you say your favorite beach? How about favorite beach? Uh, you know, uh, uh, I I went to um, to Lombok many years ago. I did a, another book called Islands of Fire, Islands of Spice about Indonesia and went to uh, Lombok, which is the island past Bali. You go Java, Bali, uh, Lombok. And they had a beach there called Kuta, which was completely undeveloped. Um, and, uh, and I remember thinking, boy, I would just, pure sugar white sand and you know beautiful arched palm trees and frangipani and um night blooming jasmine it was fantastic um and beautiful views of volcanoes in the distance 
uh, I wanted to buy property there. Um, and I didn't, of course. Uh, and I've since heard that it's become quite developed. I have not uh, yeah. been back. But uh, this is not the Kuta Beach in Bali. This was Kuta Beach in Lombok. Gotcha. Uh, and it was pretty, pretty amazing. So um, that's a, at least a memory of a, of a memorable beach. Right. Uh, um, without a doubt. And this question I usually ask people and they don't always have uh, the answer, but I bet you you do. Best place in the world for adventure travel. Ooh, that's another tough one. I mean, there's so many um, good destinations. I, one of the um, one of the classics, of course, is, is New Zealand um, because it's sort of a, a a compression of all the the uh, the, the great uh, adventure possibilities of the world into a relatively small space. You know, with the Southern Alps, um, with fantastic skiing, um, uh, great river rafting. Um, you know, bungee cord jumping was invented there. Uh, uh, it's it's got surfing, sailing. It's got almost anything you could think of for adventure travel. So right. it's it's what comes to mind top. But there there are many 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 destinations. I've been a fan of the Republic of Georgia for the last couple of years, and going back there in May, um, it has the Caucasus, which is considerably higher than the Alps, and then it's got the Black Sea. So you get all the the water things and and then if you want to count wine as adventure travel it's the place where wine was invented so it's got the glorious wines um uh and river i went river rafting fantastic rivers as well so uh it's got everything it's too well wow. so what's the most adventurous activity you've ever done or i mean it's flying in that little plane above the animals in africa sounds like it's going to take the cake but well, certainly when I was younger, I did a lot of first descents of rivers, and that's really how the company got started. Um, and there's no shortage of high adventure, uh, including you know misadventure, that happened as we were we were sort of navigating these these uh, un, uncharted uh, rivers um, through very deep canyons and uh, you know and extraordinary landscapes and uh, and and meeting uh, cultures that are so so wildly different than our own um it was all all very magical and and adventurous so which some, so. what are some of the rivers that you chartered well the the zambezi and in, in africa the indus in pakistan the bio bio in chile uh the yangtze in china uh the euphrates in turkey um are you kidding the, me you did you did all those like oh yeah yeah, yeah. And, and you were the first the first, the absolute first. Oh my so God. it's a long list. Um, you know, and I did a book called River Gods. I'll have to give you a copy when I see you. Um, that, that is an account of of many of those first descents. So um, uh, yeah, that was that was a sort of an earlier uh, chapter, but but I was on a mad mission to see how many first descents of rivers we could do because the technology just become available just as I started out. Um, so you could you could. Uh, you could use boats that were self-bailing and collapsible and oars that were collapsible. So you could put everything into a, a suitcase and fly anywhere in the world and trek it in by mule or whatever it is and and head downstream and see what you found. Unbelievable. I'm, I'm yeah. speaking to a living legend. I, this, is my, this is my first. Yeah. yeah. Unbelievable. How about what's the best sightseeing tour you ever done or excursion? And it could be one of yours that you guys do. Uh, uh boy best excursion um let's see we uh we we pretty much cover the planet um I guess so. uh yeah um uh i uh I, it's I, a tough question i know it's, yeah but, yeah there's there's there i mean there's so many itineraries i mean one of the uh, unique ones that i talk about is i did a progressive dinner in the cook islands where i had went to three different houses one for appetizers the main entree and dessert and i just loved it it wasn't really adventurous but it was just a great you know kind of like a sightseeing tour and you just get to, yeah. get to know the people meet people see what it's like to live there yeah a movable feast yes uh, so to say um well uh you know i i i led a trip to saudi arabia a couple of years ago um and it was the first for our company uh and um uh, not many travelers have been in Saudi Arabia because it, it, it hadn't allowed tourist visas until recently. Right. Um, and which was, this was pre-tourist visa that we got, we got in. We got in through a back door through a prince. 
um, uh, and we did the empty quarter. And that had always been something that intrigued me because the, you know, the empty uh, quarter has, is sort of uh, full of mythology and legend and, and uh, Alfred uh, Thessinger wrote about it extensively. He was supposedly the first Westerner to, to cross it. Um, it's the largest sand desert in the world. Uh, and it takes up about a quarter of the entire kingdom. Um, that was that to me was was a magical experience to to cross um, uh, cross the empty quarter and the and and all the sand dunes and Lawrence of Arabia type, type of experience. So it was well, great. I'm pretty sure I've been to the empty quarter as long as it carries spills over to uh... Oman. It spills into Oman. Okay, well I've been to Oman, yeah. but yeah. I, th I think I, I thought I did it in the UAE. No. Um, no, that wouldn't be the empty quarter because uh, uh, it's it's uh, south of the UAE. UAE. Um, it uh, um, you know if you look on the map, you'll see this gigantic swath right. of desert in uh, in Saudi Arabia. That's it. Wow. Um, so, but you do have UAE and UAE and and Qatar and stuff. You do have the sands, the desert sands that go in there, and right. you could go dune bashing. Yeah, I've done that. Probably did. Times. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which is, yeah. Which is exciting. So, when yeah. you go to these places, by the way, do you do you read about their history before going in, or? That's a. I mean, that is such a great question because there are two philosophies, and I've experimented with both of them. One is that the more you read about a destination, the less likely you are to have an original experience, because uh, it's been filtered by everybody who's been there before, uh, and it's very often a disappointment. So, um, you know, they, they they talk about how how if you go see the Taj Mahal, after years of seeing the imagery of it, you'll be disappointed because it doesn't measure up to, to uh, the crowdless imagery and, uh, and such. And, and I found that to be the case if you over-research. Right. The other theory is, is you, um, you, you try to enter a place with as little foreknowledge as possible, but an open mind, uh, and then it becomes a unique experience that you interpret on your own. Um, and there's merit to that. And I've done that several times. Um, but at the same time, you cannot get an appreciation for, um, for the backstories, the history, the hidden nooks and, and crannies, the, uh, all the stories that, you know, th that led to it becoming a great destination. So while you get the benefit of your personal interpretation, you don't get the, the benefit of, of standing on the shoulders of people who have gone there before and can lend information. So I, I've done both. And I'm not really sure which is the better of the two. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm with you. <clears throat> I, I feel the same way. Um, well, speaking of books, do you have a favorite travel book? Uh, yes, uh, The Devil Drives has always been a real a favorite of mine. Um, it's, uh, it's, the, it's the Richard Burton story. And, uh, you know, he was this, this polymath explorer who, um, uh, in the middle 1800s, went, went out to, to seek the source of the Nile uh, with, with, uh, with his colleague, John Speak. But he did a lot more than that. He traveled all over the world. He was, he was gifted in that he could pick up a language almost immediately. So he spoke an, an incredibly large number of, of, um, of, of languages and could me meld in. So he would... Um, uh, uh, he would disguise himself as an Arab trader or something. And he, he got into to Mecca, was a, one of the first foreigners into Mecca. Uh, and um, uh, and he, he, did the, he, he, he translated the Kama Sutra, the first person to ever do that. Uh, uh, he was just this consummate explorer and he did it all out of curiosity and passion. And that's what I, I love the most about, about him as a human being. He was driven by curiosity, yeah. and that that to me, uh, you know, resonates. I, that's I, I like to I like to feel that that's one of the motors that that uh, that keep me on the road. So, and, and do you speak foreign languages? I I speak poorly of foreign languages. Uh, I speak little tidbits of of many, but I am I am not uh, gifted in that way. So I, I, either of mine, as you can tell, I barely speak English. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, and that's my only yeah. language. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I always try to tell people, you know, don't use that. Don't let that uh, deter you from going to traveling abroad. I mean, because yeah. these yeah. days, 
you can pretty much always find someone that speaks English, especially if you find a younger generation or you yeah. have so many gadgets these days too, uh, yeah. including apps. And, and actually, yeah. let's talk real quick about your app. You have an app called Stellar. Yes, uh, Stellar, it's uh, S-T-E-L-L-E-R, which stands for Storyteller. Uh, and it's a travel app that allows you to, uh, to, through your mobile device, tell a multimedia story of wherever you go and whatever you do and whatever you think is, is relevant. Um, and it has, has become, in a short order, the, I think the largest storytelling travel app out there. Um, it's in 190 some countries and, and has you know, million, millions of users who, who, who swear by it and love it. Um, it, you know, it features video and, and stills and music and, and maps and does geolocation and does hints. Um, so you can log on to it. You'll see new stories being created constantly. Um, uh, and it's a, it's a, it's a tool. Um, uh, it has a lot of creation tools. Uh, it's, it's one of these things where you can create a story once on Stellar and it can, it can populate on all the other uh, social platforms immediately. Uh, and it has no ads, so there's no distractions. Uh, and it's not random. It's really all about the celebration of travel. And is so, it free? It's free. Yeah, it's free. So there you go. Awesome. So yeah. download that. And it's it's available on both Android and um, iOS. Uh, yep, it sure is. Good. So, yeah, so, so take a look, take a drive. And, you know, I think you'd be delighted. It's It's been a lot of fun working on this thing. Good. A few more questions. Um, favorite travel movie? Oh, wow. Um, you know, I loved um, uh, The Year of Living Dangerously, which takes place in Indonesia in 19, I think it was 1967, was the year of Living Dangerously when the, when the, uh, there was a coup and the Chinese, <coughs> attempted coup, the Chinese tried to take over Indonesia and, um, and the backlash was to, to murder all, everybody of Chinese descent, uh, a, million, a million people or so died. And Mel Gibson stars it. I think it was one of his breakthrough roles with Sigourney Weaver. Wow. Um, I mean, it's travel in the sense that you travel around Indonesia. It's, it's shot, I think, in Indonesia. Um, and it was an epic event. Uh, but there's so many great travel movies. Um, mm -hmm. I, I've always loved um, uh, uh, African Queen. I watched that again the other night. Um, uh, terrific travel film. And I loved Out of Africa. And I think it did a lot for... Africa and love it, play in the fields of the Lord, about the Amazon. Um, so yeah, they're, they're, it's, a, it's a deep well. You could create a TV cable channel that just not, nothing but uh, travel movies. And I think it would find a wrapped audience. Actually, yeah. it's a great idea. I don't know why the travel channel hasn't done that. Um, yeah. How about what's your worst travel moment? Uh, worst travel moment? Um, uh, I, I, uh, was in line to fly to, uh, to Germany, I think it was. And I had written, uh, a, a, a draft of, 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 a book and I had it in my briefcase and I set my briefcase down and, um, I, and suddenly I heard all this scuffle, this noise and they go, look, there he goes, there he goes. And somebody had grabbed my briefcase and ran out of the airport. In um, Germany? No, no, I was on my way to Germany. Um. Uh, so this was, a, this was a while ago now. Where were you, LA? I was in LA. I was at LAX. And I ran after the guy and he disappeared into the crowds and nobody ever caught him. But here I was, I think I was giving a speech in Frankfurt. Um, and uh, and he had my, they had my passport, they had um, my, my, my book. <laughs> um, uh, so I went to the counter and I said, did you see what happened? They go, yeah. I said, you know, what can I do? I'm giving this speech in, in two days. And they gave me right there a little piece of paper that allowed me to get on the plane and, and arrive and go through immigration. And they whisked me off to the American embassy to get a temporary passport. So they let me on the plane. I doubt that would happen these days. I was going to say, that would not happen these days. This yeah, must be yeah. a while ago. Yeah, this is probably 20 years ago or so. Um, but that was, you know, that was a moment of horror. and For sure. Know, and uh, Wow. You know, that uh, you never got your book back. No, I, I, I had to rewrite it. <laughs> so uh, and I learned many lessons there. Lots yeah. of, lots of backups on, <laughs> on things. Um, so, but the book turned out pretty well. It, it, it won an award. Uh, probably the first version of wouldn't, wouldn't have done as well. Uh, it's true. <laughs> yeah. I'd love to see you looking at the bright side. Okay. Yeah. 
uh, what's your dream destination? Uh, uh, a dream destination. I mean, you've been almost everywhere. I mean, it, what country do you really want to go to that you haven't been to? Well, I, I'd love to to work with um, with either Elon Musk or uh, or uh, uh, Jeff Bezos, who's doing, you know, a space Blue Horizon, yeah, and <laughs> and and get to space. You know, that, that's that would be a goal if that can be achieved in, wow. in the next five, ten years, or whatever it is. So um, that would be exciting. I certainly right. would like to do that. Well, but there are a few places left that I haven't been. I'm, I have a trip to Angola scheduled for this. That's June. a tough one. That's a tough visa to get. Well, I, I got the visa, so we're all set for that. But it's for June. Um, uh, and there are a few others scattered around the world that, that haven't visited yet that are on the list. So we'll see. Okay. And, and by the way, if you weren't going to live in the United States, where would you live? Uh, you know, I've often thought about that. And I, I have not never come to a place that I thought would make sense. The U.S., uh, you know, I... I don't want to be overly patriotic, but the U.S. has got more to offer than any other place uh, on the planet. Um, so uh, I would I would pass on that one. I would say I would stay here. Well, okay. Yeah. Um, two more questions. Yeah. What's the most important thing travel has taught you? Uh, well, humility for one. Uh, I've had I've seen the good and the bad, um, uh, and the 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 fact that that uh, if you do encounter and sit down with with people who are unlike you uh, uh and and you get to to find uh the the commonalities that it all the cliches are true that there there are more things alike about us wherever you go than there are difference and it does you know it marks all those cliches that the more you travel the more you understand, the more you see the interconnectedness of all things, and the more you recognize our common humanity. Um, so yes, I, I think travel is good and it's good for everybody. And the more people who travel, I think the more understanding and acceptance there, there will be on the planet. Um, and, and it erases the idea of the other. So, um, uh, and it sort of compromises jingoism and, uh, you know, and other sort of harmful sensibilities that are easy to fester if you don't get out on the road. I agree with you 100% so. on that. Um, my last question, your best travel tip. <laughs> best travel. And by the way, while you're thinking uh, of that, did yeah. you come up with your favorite hotel or lodge? I forgot the. Well, I can think of, I can think of one, but there, there are many, many. Um, uh, I I love the Explorer Lodges, which are in, in Chile and, and now there's there's one in Easter Island. My favorite is the Explorer Lodge in Torres del Paine in southern Chile. That's you you've probably seen the pictures of the of the spires of Torres del Paine. These beautiful beautiful rock um, uh, towers, and it's got the best location in the world. It's right at the base of these towers. The Explorer Lodge. It, it is it is otherworldly and spectacular, and it, it never ceases to, to just take your breath away as, as you sit there and, and gaze at it and wonder at it and go, my God, how could how could the planet offer something so beautiful? So that was that that that's a great a great destination. But I could I could put together a list of a hundred great <laughs> great lodges to stay at. There's so many. All right. Well then. Um, and then how about your best travel tip? Best travel tip. Um, uh, you know, I would say um, go with the flow. You know, my, my wife, Laura, um, uh, she used to say that she would would uh, date various people and then always invite them to travel with her to discover um they dealt with the with the uh, unknowns and the uh, indignities of travel. Uh, and and most of them got flustered and, and anxious ridden and uh, had conniptions and didn't like it when things went wrong and they, the tempers would flare. Um, so I, I think, I don't know if it could be consciously done or if this is a DNA thing, but going with the flow and celebrating chaos, maybe that's the phrase there. If you can enjoy chaos, celebrate in it and find merit and f actually find joy 
in chaos, travel is for you. <laughs> um, and it, if you can somehow incorporate that into your, your worldview, um, then, then it, it will be a magic carpet ride. Well, your wife is absolutely right. And actually one of my bits of advice for uh, newlywed cust uh, couples is to go on your honeymoon before yes. you get married. That's a good, that's a good one. <laughs> because you really yeah. learn about the other person when you travel. And yes. actually that's, that's how I met my wife traveling. And I was like, man, yeah. she, she's amazing. And yeah. the way she deals with people and situations. So that's, yeah, that's what yeah. you really want. Yeah, yeah. She, so, she goes with the flow. Yeah. yeah. Well, Richard, you know, we're only going to do a short interview, but man, you're just so interesting. And we just had to keep going. So thank you for, uh, for taking the time. Anytime, Johnny, you do that. So oh, really yeah, I, hope, I hope to see you again soon. It's been too yeah, long. I, I hope I, I look forward to seeing you again. I think yeah. actually the last time I saw you was a, a year ago in New York City in, in January, the New York Times Travel Show. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. So, and then we, we were also at that Swiss event. That's in, right. Uh, so actually... In Santa Monica, yes. Oh, that was probably a Christmas thing. So that might right might have been right before. Yeah, that. yeah. So, well, you take care. Say hi to your wife, okay. and I um, hope to see you as well. Say hi to the kids you and too. your dad. All right. Yeah. And uh, hopefully, hope you. Get, I hope you get vaccinated soon. I do too. I really do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Take care. All right, take care. All right. Bye.